yesterday's video got really a lot of comments, a lot of uh, you know talking and a bit of arguing and a lot of controversy, which I was expecting because obviously doing something like this is a bit uh, well controversial. Some people were saying it's a brilliant idea. Some people were saying that it's a stupid idea, but they still want to watch it. And some of the comments were really irrelevant. People were thinking about how you know the car would be loud and not comfortable inside. Um, with this project, we really don't care about it being loud inside or not comfortable to drive and that. We just want to make this stupid idea work. And also there were many comments that this is just one big joke that we're trolling, that uh, next episode we're just going to take the bike out and do a normal engine swap. Well, no. Today we plan to take the bike out and take off all the plastics from the bike, get it ready for painting because we want to paint it red, as we said in the video, and then kind of prepare the chassis of the car for more fabrication and kind of still think what we need to do. So without further ado, let's get to work. days ago we were taking out the engine from Kevin out we were laughing how easily this car is built everything is literally very simple and everything is on two or three screws uh, from the factory and this time we took out uh, the plastics from the bike and it turns out that it's even easier to work on a bike it took us 20 minutes this is the first time we are working on a bike to be honest so all this experience is very new to us which is I think cool oh. to learn something new yeah, now Marek is getting rid of this plastic because we're not going to use it and also it looks it's, ugly. It's uh, two pieces actually, not one. Yeah. We were thinking also should we paint the frame, but I think for now we're going to just leave it silver. And also thinking about the wheels, because the wheels at the moment they are white. I don't think white would fit inside the cabin. No. Because nothing is white. But maybe it will stand out, I don't know. We'll leave the wheels for later. For now we're just going to take care of plastics and uh, we'll see about the wheels later. Yeah. Today the main job, uh, sand it down, proper nice, primer, the only thing is that I need to sand it outside, but luckily today the weather is super nice, so I'm gonna sit next to our beautiful Beamer and do it there. Okay, so all the parts are pretty much ready to paint. They have been sanded down. The only problem we are having now is that we don't know the color code of Kevin because we didn't take a picture and we just simply don't remember the color code of Kevin. So what we're gonna do is take Kevin's wheel 
which is painted the same color, the same red shade. And I'm gonna go to the paint shop with that wheel and ask them if they can make a similar or identical paint. I'm gonna buy just a little bit of paint and I'm gonna paint uh, just one piece. And then we can put that piece next to Kevin and then we're gonna see if this is the color we want to paint the whole bike with. So for now I put the primer on that part, the front panel. And now let's go paint shop and get a bit of red paint. Okay, I'm back from the shop. I got the paint. I think this is the one because even the guys from the shop, they knew or they can't remember what color code was it. So let's now quickly sand this one down with some paper 800 and paint it with this color and then we'll see. Hopefully it's the right one. The thing is painted, but honestly, I don't think that's the that's the shade of red we needed. Still wet, but I'm gonna take it inside. It's getting very cold. Hmm. I mean, actually, it's a bit different. On the video, it looks very close. Maybe let's wait till tomorrow to see when to it's see proper when it's proper dry. No, I think that's. It's not that bad. Oh, especially on the camera, if you look, it, it looks really. No, Same. Yeah. Let's just get it dry for now. Yeah, keep it somewhere. I'll put it there so it's not dusty. And I think for today, overall, our job is pretty much yeah, done. For today, this is it. Tomorrow we're gonna see. Actually, from here it doesn't look that bad, actually. Yeah, it looks very close from here. We'll see. Tomorrow we're gonna put it next to Kevin, then we're gonna decide if this is the paint that we're gonna use. If so, we're gonna paint the rest of the bike. If not, we're gonna steal. Go back to the paint shop and see whatever different options. Different if what we can we take want. the door out tomorrow from the top, bring it outside because it's going to be sunny and see outside the actual color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, see you tomorrow. Yeah. Boom. You know what? I think that's the actual color. Oh yeah, I don't see any difference to be honest. I mean, it's a bit brighter, but it's going to get a bit darker. But it's also, yeah, that's the thing. It's going to get darker. Also, if you do three layers instead of two, Gonna be a bit would, darker, and also the bike would be inside all the time. Yeah, so, so you know, like this, it's already looking darker. Let's take it outside though. Take the door and compare it in yeah, the in the see. sun. Let's see. It's very close though. Question is now, would you see this difference if the bike's inside? No, not much. I mean, I'll probably Should, on the camera. Uh, look, if you look like this, it's literally the same. Uh, you really cannot see the big difference especially that it's never going to be under the same uh, light, light it's conditions. It's going to be inside. Yeah. yeah. Well, most likely we're going to keep it like this. I uh, want to paint layers. it a bit thicker, put more layers so after we can polish the paint a bit. Of. But you already polished. Welcome to our uh, new segment of our garage, our professional painting boot. Should do like them reveals, you know? Yeah.
Okay, so the actual video finished here. Uh, there's no more job to do today. And now let's start a bit more technical segment of the video because I want to address some of the comments from the last video and uh, explain more about how are we planning to do this. So I made this list on my phone, not to get lost. And uh, let's start with mounting bike in a car. So mounting the bike in a car shouldn't be that uh, big of an issue. We already spoke to Derek, he's gonna help us do it next weekend. We're gonna basically mount the, uh, the chassis of the bike to the chassis of the car at the back. And in front, we're just gonna run, uh, we're just gonna uh, run a rod that's gonna go through the fork, through the wheel, and this rod is gonna be connected with some brackets to the subframe, uh, which is under the car, more or less in this spot. So by doing this, we're gonna have the bike uh, properly attached to the car. Also, at the end, when everything is finished, we're gonna have a roll cage in a car. So from the roll cage, also we're gonna have some brackets going to the bike uh, to keep it more steady. So that's the first point. Before you get to the next point. There was a off list uh, thing that a lot of people commented is Sam, you're gonna ruin the, the drive comfort. The people who say that they never actually drove this car before, there was no comfort whatsoever. Anyway, uh, the next thing is exhaust, and this would be probably the easiest job to do. Basically, we're gonna obviously stray pipe it. So we're gonna get rid of the muffler and we're gonna just basically weld the piping so the exhaust tip is outside of the car. It's gonna be either uh, it's gonna go either through the, the back door or like to the, down to the floor and uh, under the car here or maybe to the side. I don't that know. That is yet. easily changeable but, at yeah, the end. That's, that's, that's the really one of the last jobs. That's nothing we should be concerned about. The next thing is the drive. So connecting the gearbox of the bike with the back wheels. So our first idea was to remove this completely, the stock drive, and just run, uh, you know, an axle with the wheels and a chain on the axle. But this actually would cost some issues that we didn't think about before. Thanks to your comments, uh, we did uh, more research and found out that uh, the chain and the sprocket is not gonna be good for this project. Because firstly, the sprocket needs to be aligned perfectly. The chain will have to be much stronger and like heavy duty for such a weight of the car. And also it just wouldn't be um, safe because if we would drive the car and uh, the chain would break, someone would uh, get banged <laughs> in the head probably. So for now, our idea is changed a bit. So we wanna get rid of the chain completely and here we are gonna run adapter and some kind of, uh, I don't know the English name, but basically the thing that's gonna uh, allow us to change the direction of the gear, so. So like angle kit. Like an angle. 90 degree gearbox, angle gearbox thing. thing. So it's spinning like this now, but it's gonna spin like this. So, you know, we're gonna just basically connect it to the uh, sprocket and then here at the end, we're gonna have. Uh, Drive shaft. A drive shaft, normal car drive shaft, which we're gonna connect from here to the diff, to the original diff of the car. We're just gonna have a little bit of a of an angle. So also to do this, we are probably gonna have to mount the bike not just in the middle of the car, but more to the right of the car, because the drive shaft is gonna go uh, from here, and obviously the drive shafts cannot go with a big angle uh, towards the diff. So the bike's gonna be moved to the right, and it kind of the drive is gonna be in the middle of the car, okay? This is gonna allow us to keep the original suspension, original drive, and also be much more safe, and because we're not running any limited slip or anything, the car's gonna turn much nicer, and you're not gonna have as much tension on the drive as if you would use normal sprockets and chain solution. Filling up with petrol. Some people were asking, how are we gonna fill up the bike with the petrol? Because obviously we wanna keep uh, the, the tank from the bike. So, because the bike is very much, um, very high in the car, like this is more or less the roof and this is the tank, we're gonna basically uh, cut out the hole in the roof and do some kind of uh, flippable, uh, how do you call it, klapeczka? Klapeczka. Flippable thing, the same as if you have uh, here. Look, we're gonna cut out the, the hole in the roof and we're gonna have this little klapeczka like in the car, so you can just open it and fill up the car with petrol from through the roof. Imagine the views in the petrol station. Yeah, the people from petrol station is gonna laugh. Okay, so that is easy. Ah, also, right now I wanna address some comments because there were a lot of comments saying that would be much easier to just remove the front wheel or remove the back wheel and just put the bike without the wheels in the car. But then so it's not... Uh, the whole idea of this project is to put the whole bike in a car. You know, putting it without a wheel wouldn't count, I think. Because then yeah, you cannot say... Because then, okay, it's like, you, it makes your life easier, but it doesn't look as cool. Imagine like, this inside, the whole thing. So we want to put the whole bike with the wheels, with everything uh, inside. So 
That's why we're keeping the tank, we're keeping the wheels, we want to keep everything in the bike as, as The only as thing as that we will remove from the bike is the dash. And this actually, dash... No, no, I was actually thinking. What? Because to you make can, a second dash? No, because you can buy this dash. It's very cheap, I checked already yeah. online. So just put another one there and connect that one. Yeah, so have both. So we're gonna buy uh, the same dash as here. Just gonna put it uh, where the original dash was and connect this one to the bike. So we're gonna have all the parameters on that dash right there. Another thing on my list is uh, changing gear. Uh, the gear we talked about before is gonna be easy lever uh, going to the front of the car. That shouldn't be complicated at all. Uh, throttle and clutch, both throttle and clutch here work uh, with just lines. So we're gonna simply connect the lines from uh, original car's uh, pedals to the clutch and to the to the throttle as well. I think that should shouldn't be a, be a biggest issue. It would be. Bigger. I mean, we say it now, and then it's gonna yeah. be three videos later. Yeah, we don't Probably. know what to do. It would be a much bigger issue if the clutch would be uh, Hy hydraulic. hydraulic. Mm, another thing. Oh, cooling. Cooling? Probably 80% of the comments were asking how are we going to cool the bike because the bikes, when you ride the bike, there's a lot of air coming through it and obviously it gets, um, it gets cooler when you drive. But in this condition, when the bike's going to be kind of caged inside of the van, it's not going to get much air to cool it down. So we were thinking, because the original radiator of the car is here, so we were thinking to run in front of the motorbike, so more or less here. Well, let me just go down with the car. Okay. okay, so the original radiator was sitting somewhere around here and the bike finishes here. So in front of the bike, we're gonna have in the same place as the original radiator, but we're gonna order a big, uh, like uh, the same radiator that I have in my drift car and people use for more of a performance builds. So the big fat radiator, it should cool down the bike much better. So we're gonna connect this radiator with the housing of the motorbike. So we're gonna install uh, big fans as well to like electric fans to blow the air to the radiator. There is many people that are running motorbike engines in cars and somehow they get it cooled. So I think this should work. And also because we are here now, we can talk about uh, the space because originally the bike should be in, a, in the middle of the car, but because of the drive, we are moving the bike more towards this side, the passenger side. So the driver is gonna have much more space for to mount the seat and I think the passengers just not gonna have just one driver gonna be, yeah the last thing we're gonna do when everything is here working we're gonna just do a roll cage in this car because because we are cutting a lot of the structural uh, parts so it would be better to have a proper roll cage to kind of reinforce the the whole chassis of the car and um, because we want to have this car built very how do you say it we okay so all our cars if you look at them you look at them from five meters, they look good, but when you approach them closer, you can see like, this is not the best, this is not, you know, perfect. So this car we want to have as close to perfect as possible, so... It's so yeah. a lot of work, but I think it can be done. We have Just... all winter. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, probably some people's gonna ask in the comments why we already painted the bike. When we are gonna fit the bike later in the car, I know it's gonna be, you know, coupled probably like more than 10 times, you're gonna have to come, come in with the bike, go out, come in, go out. Uh, to all this work, we're gonna take out the plastics. For now, we just wanted to have the color ready, have the bike's plastic in the color. So, and also for the video, I think it's a cool thing to to have a bike in the same color. It, it sort of, yeah, like it sort of makes you wanna do more work yeah. straight away because this, you see the progress already. Yeah, and this work we can do uh, ourselves. Let's just go to the bike for a second. About the bike, we obviously painted it as we always paint. We are not professionals. I just keep saying it. I am pretty happy with the paint, how it came out. I put a bit more layers, so when the bike is completely dry, because it's not yet, we painted it two days ago. So like in a week or two, we can still take a polish and polish the whole bike, so it's gonna have a nice shine. As well as uh, we're gonna polish Kevin at the end, when everything but is ready. But we already have you. Why do we need to? Marek, we did, another. We did this joke in the same video just a bit. Uh, also, the wheels, we're gonna polish the wheels. That's gonna be basically episode when we polish everything. Yes. Anyway, if you have any other questions, we can answer them in future videos of the garage and all that. Yeah. Maybe at, at the end of most videos, maybe. I'm sorry for all of you that said, uh, this is not Kevin anymore, you're ruining the car, you're ruining the bike, you know, this is not cool and stuff. 
we just want to do something that was just a stupid idea when we were drunk and then we thought why not and just want to make it happen so if you don't like it i'm sorry but we're still doing it and in the end of the day it's our car we can do whatever we want with it yeah if you have your own it your was, own car you can do whatever you want unless it's audi this car anyway. was never this car was never meant to be drivable van we never used it as a van like we use it as a van on the events but it still comes on it on the lavette car and it was never the car that was comfortable to drive or like you're never just driving this car and be like you just want you just want to look it at was it cool. it was cool driving it but it not scary. in a way I was, was I was going about. 100. Yeah. So yeah. what's going to be the next episode? So Darek's going to come here with his tools, with a TIG welder, with some pipings and a lot of his stuff, which we don't know much about. And we're going to just spend the whole weekend, probably three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, with this, he's a great engineering mind, so he's going to probably get a lot of ideas that we didn't think of. So that's going to be a big progress. And uh, then we'll see. Then we'll see what happens. Yeah. Okay. I would say that's it. Thank you all for watching and Rolly later, don't worry. <laughs> Rolly. It's coming. It's coming. Later. Ciao.